Welcome to AgriPulse Newsmakers, where we aim to take you to the heart of ag policy. I'm Hannah Pagel. Our guest this week is Rosa DeLauro, who joins us to discuss appropriations, the WIC program, and the reorganization of FDA's human foods program. But first, here's this week's headlines. Producers are feeling a little more optimistic about the economy and their finances, according to the latest Ag Economy Barometer from Purdue University and the CME Group. One of the biggest reasons for this month's improvement is producer expectations for interest rates. Nearly half of those who were surveyed believe interest rates will go down over the next year. 36% of those surveyed point to high input costs as their number one concern moving forward. Lower crop prices were second with 26%. The latest bird flu outbreak has spread to a farm that's part of the country's biggest egg producer, Calmaine Foods. Nearly 2 million birds will have to be killed at the Texas farm. This farm is in the same general area as some of the dairy farms that also reported cases of bird flu in cattle. This all comes as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention announced earlier this week a person working on a dairy farm tested positive for a form of bird flu. However, USDA says the risk to the public remains low and that initial testing hadn't detected any changes in the virus to make it more transmissible to humans. And finally, the FDA's proposed human foods program might not be able to completely carry out its initiatives because of a lack of funding. FDA Deputy Commissioner Jim Jones says the program is focused on improving the safety and quality of the food supply. Some of the agency's priorities include making sure imported food is safe and tested, and working on new labeling to make it easier for people to see which foods are healthy. However, Jones added funding that's currently available is modest, and limited funds will restrict the amount of work that can get done. Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro is the ranking member of the House Appropriations Committee. She recently helped steer conversations to pass the fiscal year 2024 appropriations bills, which allocated money to USDA and FDA. When reflecting on the past six months of appropriations discussions, we asked her how she felt with the final results. Yeah, well, you know, look, uh, from where we started, which was really, as I can put it as best I can, is horrific when um, the uh, agriculture bill uh, failed on the floor of the House, that was Democrats and Republicans voting against it. And essentially, because of the drastic cuts, they went back to cuts, they proposed a funding, the Republicans went back uh, proposing a funding level as low as it was last seen in 2001. So people were not going to, um, you you know, both sides of the aisle were not going to, uh, uh, support this this effort. So we made serious changes to that. The writers weren't there. We did fund WIC. We made uh, uh, changes with regard to the um, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, food stamp program. Um, uh, uh, we you know we didn't allow them to you, you know diminish the rural co-ops. Uh, long and the short of it, um, we just d- didn't cave. Uh, to those issues. And it was a bipartisan support at the end, which was really very, very uh, heartening, um, in which we were able to pass the ag bill. So So looking specifically at the Women, Infants and Children um, Nutrition Program, you know, you mentioned the cuts that Republicans tried to do. um, Specifically looking at the cuts that Republicans were trying to make with the fruits and vegetables, um, the premium on that program. You know, uh, you know, given all of that, um, you know, what will it take to find more common ground on this topic for future conversations? Well, look, I would just say to you, I would have thought that we could find common ground. (laughs) In these in these areas, the WIC program has been a bipartisan program since its initiation, and you know we were a billion dollars short. And quite frankly, I just said we're not negotiating on WIC. You know we need to to do that. If we should agree on anything, to get to your point, it is that we ought to be in the business of looking at how, in fact, we are able uh, to deal with nutrition programs, whether it is for children, whether it is for seniors. Um, just you know, adults, uh, and as I say, like like the WIC program, etc., really a bipartisan effort. So they were turning their back on where we did find common ground. 
So, you know, looking ahead at the next, um, you know, the next fiscal year starts October 1st. Um, and, you know, the committee will have a new Republican chair because um, Representative Kay Granger has announced she is retiring. Um, Representative Tom Cole is the Republican front runner for this position. So, you know, where do you think the two of you can find the most areas of agreement? Well, listen, I, I will just say that uh, Tom Cole and I, as a matter of fact, we just chatted a couple of days ago, but we both chaired the Labor H subcommittee. We were both ranking members on the Labor H subcommittee and we produced bills. Actually, the, uh, we produced bills after a period of time where they couldn't get, they get to any agreement on Labor H. So Tom Cole and I are good friends. Do we differ on issues? Yes, but we have a very, very good working relationship. And that's what I'm looking forward to um, in, the, uh, in, 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 in going forward. Um, and we have lots of the similar concerns about uh, some of the ag programs and their benefits uh, uh, to farmers and nutrition issues as well. So I'm looking forward to it. We're good friends. And we work together very well. We'll be right back with more from Congresswoman DeLauro right after this. Regenerative poultry production is a process by which nature can actually recapture and restore the energy that is being taken out of a space. Farm Credit helped Rehi build his dream of regenerative poultry farming and encouraging fellow immigrants to find community in agriculture. Nothing beats a farm. I'm just pursuing happiness. Learn more at farmcredit.com slash beginning. Farmers are always there for each other. We shed tears together, we celebrate together, but we also grow together. Farm Bureau is the largest general farm organization in the country. We have the farmers back. If you're a farmer and you're not a member, we would welcome you into our Farm Bureau family. And if you want to know more about agriculture, come be part of this great family. Welcome back. At the end of 2023, FDA rolled out a plan to reorganize the human foods program and is looking to implement the changes this year. But this week, FDA Deputy Commissioner Jim Jones says the agency might not have enough funding to make the necessary changes. Congresswoman DeLaro says Congress will find the resources to help support the agency. I feel directly responsible for the changes that were made at the FDA and having someone who is directly dealing with, with, with foods that hasn't happened in the past. And I've, I've met with Jim Jones and he is, uh, I think he's very talented and can do this job. Then it becomes the uh, appropriations committee's job uh, to make sure that we do provide the resources that are necessary. Obviously, uh, people are gonna wanna know what those changes are, what it means, et cetera. And I have full confidence that we will look to the future and, and, and serious changes which are necessary at the, at the FDA, which is why I had proposed a, a deputy commissioner uh, for, uh, for food and, uh, and food safety. And, uh, uh, and I think that we ought to be able to uh, come to agreement on funding that will allow him to do his job. So 80% of the food supply is regulated by FDA and 20% is regulated by USDA. You know, do you think the oversight of the food system should be more evenly distributed between the two agencies? I, I think we ought to have a separate food safety agency that deals with the food safety uh, uh, efforts in both the USDA and in the FDA. Uh, at the FDA, I think they are dealing with um, drugs, they're dealing with uh, tobacco, uh, they deal with devices, etc. I think it's overloaded. And so I've proposed year in and year out a food safety agency. You know, we have 15 um, agencies that deal with food safety at the federal level, which is crazy, which is crazy. If you look at it, no one is in charge when something happens, you know, it's just, you know, where does it, where does it lie? If we had like the National Transportation Safety Board, a food safety agency that dealt with this, then you could look and say, hey, what happened? What went wrong? What do we do from here? 
So kind of wrapping up our conversation, you know, um, with the rise of social media platforms, especially TikTok, you know, that has also led to the rise of more social media influencers, um, specifically influencers who have gone to their social media pages to criticize the Food and Drug Administration on the safety and health of the U.S. food supply. Um, are you at all concerned about this? And if so, what do you think the um, agency's response should be um, for these influencers? specifically who have a large impact on the U.S. consumer? Look, uh, the inspection process of the volume of food that comes from overseas, where we inspect, I think, less than 1% of the food coming into the, into, into the country. So on that base, I believe we, have a, we need to have a very serious uh, protocol uh, for dealing with this. I am very, very concerned about the food supply and have been uh, for, for years. Uh, and I think we have to take very serious precautions in making sure that the food that, you know, folks go into a grocery store, they buy food for themselves and their families, and they need to know that that food is safe. So I think we need to look very, very carefully about what are the safeguards in terms of our food supply. I think it's an issue um, that the public doesn't know much about until you have a crisis. Um, where something has failed. Well, Congresswoman, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it and delighted to join you. Thank you. We'll be right back with this week's panel discussion. But first, our Andrew Hunnicky takes a look at earmarks in the appropriations funding and where that money is going. Lawmakers are reserving more than $750 million in USDA funds for projects in their states. That funding will come directly from fiscal year 2024's $22.2 billion Ag Appropriations Bill. This map shows which states requested the most funding. Topping the list was Maine with nearly $53 million in reserved funding. Second was Texas with $42 million. Pennsylvania was third with $41 million. And California was allocated nearly $33 million. The funding will be spent on a variety of projects, including research facilities and labs, hospitals, and building renovations. Noah Wicks has an in-depth look at the numbers and specific funding projects on our website, agripulse.com. For Agripulse, I'm Andrew Hunnicky. It's not as simple just to wake up one day and go, I want to be a conservation farmer. You're changing how your, your farming practice is done. You're changing your operation. Farm Credit supported John and Kelly Watley as they shifted to more sustainable farming, improving the environment where they farm and live. Learn more at farmcredit.com slash climate. Agriculture Future of America is a nonprofit building transformational leaders in food and agriculture. AFA prepares college students to join the workforce as innovative and engaged young professionals who will shape the future of agriculture. Head to agfuture.org to find out how you can get involved. Did you know AgriPulse has all your favorite podcasts, including Open Mic, Newsmakers, and Drive Time? Take us wherever you go. Subscribe on agripulse.com or on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Welcome back to AgriPulse Newsmakers. Excited to get into our panel discussion today. Joined this week with Roger Shem Rai with OFW Law and Molly Van Lu with the International Fresh Produce Association. And Molly, my first question is to you. You know, looking at the fiscal year 24 appropriations bills that just passed, what were you happy to see um, in those final bills? So the, the biggest um, one that we were pleased with was uh, full funding for the WIC program. So um, for a year or more, we've been fighting really hard against potential cuts to the fruit and vegetable benefit that would have um, impacted um, the fruit and vegetable benefit in amounts more than a billion dollars of cuts to the industry. Um, so the industry really came together with public health groups and the WIC community to really tell the story about the impact that would have on the ground. Uh, so we are really pleased that Congress stepped up and provided full funding for that program. And Roger, bringing you into the conversation here, you know, it took Congress nearly six months to pass these appropriations bills. And given that delay, I'm curious if there was any impact on agencies like FDA and USDA on their ability to get their job done these past six months. Well, there certainly was. And let's not forget the fact that not only did it take six months to get the bill done, 
the agriculture bill was originally defeated in the House over disagreements about the provisions that were in and the funding levels. You know, to the extent these were operating under a continuing resolution, they couldn't implement any new programs. Their ability to start anything that they had planned for in the 24 request was limited as well. So it was time lost, the ability to start new things was lost, and what impact that has now had on the 25 budget request for all of these agencies and how they move forward is just a continuation. So it kind of goes into my next question then for, you know, looking ahead, um, you know, Congress does need to get started on those fiscal year 25 appropriations bills, but we're also in an election year. And by the end of this year, we're going to have a completely new Congress. Um, So given all of that, you know, do you think that we will see a repeat of what happened in the 24 appropriations bills with the 25? Well, I think there is a real risk of that happening. You know, keep in mind that 20 in the House was defeated. First time I can recall an agricultural appropriations bill being defeated. Then you have to get in, and that was because of spending levels and other provisions that were thrown into that bill. We then have to take a look at what the subcommittee allocations are going to be under 302B and what that means for moving the bills forward. Uh, We know we have some members in the House that want to go to spending levels that are below those that were provided for in the Fiscal Responsibility Act. So that could create some battles. And again, to the extent that we are in election year, there will be some who will think, are we gonna be better off waiting until the lame duck session in order to get this bill done? Or perhaps do we even wanna wait until we have potentially a new administration? Will we get an appropriations bill that is more to our liking if we wait until we find out who wins the presidential election? So there will be political issues afoot. We'll be right back with more from this week's panel right after this. Farmers are always there for each other. We shed tears together. We celebrate together, but we also grow together. Farm Bureau is the largest general farm organization in the country. We have the farmers back. If you're a farmer and you're not a member, we would welcome you into our Farm Bureau family. And if you want to know more about agriculture, come be part of this great family. Register now for the 2024 AgriPulse Food and Ag Issue Summit in California. The event will offer participants a full day of presentations and panel discussions. You can hear from members of the California Legislature, food and agriculture leaders, along with industry experts and academics. This summit takes place on June 4th in Sacramento and through our virtual experience. See the latest information and register today under the events tab at agripulse.com. Welcome back. Our panel discussion continues with the International Fresh Produce Association's Molly Van Lu discussing her thoughts of FDA's recent reorganization strategy. So, you know, we've been really optimistic about the the progress at FDA. Obviously, within the human foods program, they're dealing with a number of critical issues um, for the consumer and for our industry. Um, Food safety is obviously a huge one, um, and many of my colleagues work on that. Um, But FDA also plays a really important role in not only the safety, in terms of you know, foodborne illness and prevention of, of foods, but also dietary quality and nutrition. So we're really optimistic there. Um, they've been very uh, active in reaching out to both public health and um, food industries around um, some of the areas that they want to pursue there and are committed to pursuing coming out of the White House Conference on Nutrition uh, the healthy logo, um, something we're watching very closely, um, as well as updates to to labeling and potentially front of package food labeling as well. So pivoting to the farm bill, I'm curious if there are any avenues that you would like to see pursued when it comes to nutrition policy in the next farm bill. We want to see a strong farm bill for specialty crops and all of the important programs um, that help uh, grow, um, pick, harvest, all of those things. Um, 
you're probably asking specifically about the nutrition title. Um, we have a number of priorities in that area. We need to find ways to increase access and consumption of fruits and vegetables within the SNAP program. Um, we also want to see the strengthening of the fresh fruit and vegetable program, which is a highly um, popular and um, effective program for schools all across the country in increasing exposure to fruits and vegetables. Um, there's also a huge potential to look at USDA procurement programs. Um, right now in the TFAP program, you only see about five fresh produce commodities um, that are available through that program, despite the fact that um, the U.S. grows um, hundreds, if not thousands, of um, options that could uh, potentially make their way into that program. And Roger, wrapping up our conversation with you, I'm, I know I'm giving you kind of the golden question here, but you know, when do you think we will see the next farm bill? You know, are you optimistic about the prospects of getting a farm bill done this year? Or do you think it's going to be pushed to the next? I honestly don't have a clear idea as to what's going to happen with that. Because remember, we will again have the battles over um, whether we limit the nutrition programs, whether it's SNAP or the other items. And we know Senator Stabenow has said she'd rather have no bill than a bad bill coming ahead. So in the coming weeks, if we wind up getting draft bills introduced, we may be able to make a better assessment. And let me supplement one of the things uh, that Molly was just talking about. It was an issue in the appropriations bill, and it could likely be an issue in the farm bill. And that's the secretary's use of the authority under the Commodity Credit Corporation. Uh, he used that authority a number of times in recent years in order to purchase food items that assisted producers who were facing market difficulties. But at the same time, those food items were then used in food banks, primarily in the TFAP program. And the secretary having a continued ability to do that uh, is an important thing. I know that there are some that want to say Congress should have to sign off on those things. And in some instances, they may sign off. But to what extent does that slow down the process? To what extent does it make that assistance uh, less meaningful and, and less timely? So uh, there are links between the farm programs and nutrition programs that people don't fully appreciate until the time when those links are broken. Well, there's a lot to keep our eye on in the coming weeks. So thank you both for joining us. We'll be right back with more AgriPulse Newsmakers, but first, Andrew Hunnicky introduces us to a congresswoman from Kansas in this week's Meet the Lawmaker. Congresswoman Sharice Davids represents Kansas's third congressional district, which spans south of the Kansas City metro area into rural Kansas. Raised by a single mother who served in the Army for 20 years, Davids went on to earn a law degree from Cornell Law School as a first-generation student. When she was sworn into the 116th Congress, Davids became one of the first two Native American women to ever serve in Congress. Sitting on the House Ag Committee, David says one of the challenges in connecting tribal nations with the federal government is understanding how the nuances of the two entities work. Probably usually the biggest um, hindrance to getting a new policy or uh, improving policy is is just the education around, around that. And that's um, certainly not through malice or anything, it's you, it's just it's a complicated area, um, and so one of the benefits of having so many uh, tribal leaders and um, uh, members meeting with tribal leaders and uh, folks working in that space is so beneficial is because it's usually like an education hurdle more than anything else. Congresswoman Davids also has a seat on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee as well as the Small Business Committee. You can watch her full Meet the Lawmaker interview on agripulse.com. For Agripulse, I'm Andrew Honecky. Looking closer, seeing further. That's how we do it. At Curious Plot, we're driven to find what's next for agriculture, animal care, and food. We stay curious because that's what it takes to grow understanding. That's how we plot strategies and tell stories that get results time after time. Marketing, communications, and consulting that look closer and see further. Curious Plot. We can't wait to help you tell your story.
The Senate and House Ag Committees are busy working on the next Farm Bill, which will cover commodities, specialty crops, livestock, and more. This legislation will impact every farmer, rancher, and rural business for the next five years. Make sure you don't miss insights and analytics that only AgriPulse and its top-notch team of well-connected experts can provide. Register today for a free trial at agripulse.com and click the subscribe button or email us at pam at agri-pulse.com. You don't want to miss this Farm Bill coverage. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of AgriPulse Newsmakers. Before we let you go, here's what's on the horizon for the upcoming week. Both the House and the Senate will be back in session. Committees on both sides of Capitol Hill will be holding hearings on the U.S. Agency for International Development, which distributes food aid and manages agriculture assistance around the world. The next Consumer Price Index report comes out Wednesday, and finally, USDA's monthly crop production report gets released Thursday. As always, stay tuned for the latest on this and more on agripulse.com. For Agripulse Newsmakers, I'm Hannah Pagel. Take care of yourself. Newsmakers is a production of Agripulse Communications. You can also find our new content on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to follow AgriPulse and our correspondents on social media to get breaking news and more. For agriculture, trade, food, environment, and regulatory news, your source is AgriPulse.com.